Hello and welcome to this week's My Perspective. And I want to be talking today about the subject of unity. It's the middle of the week of Christian unity and our first readings are from the first letter to the Corinthians. From chapter one. Now, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptised in the name of Paul? And this from chapter 3. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours. But Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you. And you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. And in John 17, 20 to 23, Jesus said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Yesterday, a devout Catholic made a speech which has been heard around the world. And this little section seemed very appropriate to me for this talk today. President Biden said, I know that speaking of unity can seem to some like a foolish fantasy, but history, faith and reason show us the way of unity. We can see each other not as adversaries, but as neighbours. We can treat each other with dignity and respect. Without unity there is no peace, only bitterness and fury. Well, although that speech was about the urgency of trying to unite a deeply divided nation, I think that what was said in that section holds true for unity between a deeply divided world church. Christians, we're so quick to fracture and to split off into little groups, aren't we? It's the whole of our history, really. The divisions of doctrine and practice which are held by different denominations and different parts of our faith still cause some people great anger and frustration. There's a strong feeling that my way of worshipping God is true and correct and your way is misguided and their way is wrong and heretical. It's only too common amongst us, to, amongst us all to hear that kind of thought expressed. Even within our own denomination, Anglicans are only too quick to hurl accusations at one another. Those people are too liberal, too conservative, too charismatic. They, they misrepresent the truth and it leads them into the wrong path. They don't read the Bible in the right way. They don't read it enough. They're too literal when they read it. They pray wrong, they sing wrong, they are wrong. We're so quick, so quick to make those accusations. And oddly, 
Jesus makes very little mention of the Book of Common Prayer in the Gospels. He's not recorded as spending long discussing worship songs or confirmation or the use of inclusive language either. The one thing that he does say about his followers, the church that would follow him, is that he wants them to be one, to be united. Not necessarily united in their practice, united so that the world might know that God sent him and that God loves them. President Biden spoke of history, faith and reason as showing us what unity might be. Well, we know what faith says. Faith says that we should be one. History tells us that won't be easy. But reason says that we really ought to be able to manage it. This week of prayer for Christian unity has been prepared by the monastic community in Switzerland, in Grandchamp. They're a community with a vocation to prayer, to reconcili reconciliation and to unity in the church and in the human family. And this community has its origins in the 1930s, when a group of women, from they were from the reformed tradition, sought to rediscover the importance of silence and listening to the, world of, to the word of God. Today, the community has 50 sisters from different generations, different church traditions, different countries and continents. They share a life of prayer and community and hospitality. And their worship is built on a tradition of prayer and silence. The booklet, Abiding in Christ, which contains the prayers for each day this week and uh, which is still available from the office or direct to download from the internet if you go on to the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity 2021. If you just Google that, you'll find it really quickly. This community say that as a Christian is seeking reconciliation and justice and peace, we must know the full value of a spiritual life and we have an immense responsibility and must realise it. We must unite and must help each other to create forces of calmness, refuges of peace, centres where the silence of people can call on the creative word of God. As I'm reading that, I'm reminded, I'm reminding myself of the far too frequent occasions when I speak, when silence would have been better, when I rush into judgment about my fellow Christians and their practices and their words and motives, when a little silence in God's presence would have done me much more good. On the eve of his death, Jesus prayed for the unity of those that the Father had given him, had given us. Remember, we are those that God gave to Christ. He prayed that we might all be one so that the world might believe. Every tradition in Christianity is seeking the truth. The problems usually arise when one of us claims to have a monopoly on that truth. But in seeking the truth, all of the different traditions seek to lead us to the heart of our faith, to communion with God through Christ in the Spirit. The more we live this communion, the more we're connected to other Christians, the more we're connected to all humanity. Paul also has a broad vision. All are yours, and you are of Christ, and Christ is of God, he writes. 
another Christian community. The Teze community has a rule of life and that includes this instruction. Never resign yourself to the scandal of the separation of Christians who so readily profess love for their neighbour and yet remain divided. Make the unity of the body of Christ your passionate concern. So what am I going to make my concern this week of Christian unity? A week when unity, seeking it at least, has made the international news too. Well, I'm going to have a quiet word with myself to try and exchange silence occasionally for the sarcasm that is too often my quick response to other Christians doing things that I don't approve of. I'm going to examine my motives just a little. Do I genuinely think that this practice or that song or this style of service is heretical? Or do I just mean that it doesn't suit me and I don't much like it and therefore it must be wrong? So this week, I think that the search for Christian unity might have, have to start with this particular Christian. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>